Hello, Alex here, and in this video I want to share the results of my investigation into the alleged and hotly debated, but very real, very near infrared sensitivity of Fomapan 400 in sheet film format. Let's get into it. There is a lot of debate online as to whether or not the emulsion used for Foma's Fomapan 400, at least in sheet film format, is sensitive to any infrared light. Over the past 15-ish years, across a wide breadth of forums, lots of people have posted images showing the, the wood effect, the infrared look, when shooting the film at a very low EI, like single digits, with whatever infrared filter. However, about as many people have equally said that there is no infrared sensitivity whatsoever and they got essentially no image or a completely blank negative. Now there are two problems here. First is that there's no obvious reason why people are so divided on this issue. If it's sensitive to infrared light, it's sensitive to infrared light. The other is that none of these people actually show their negatives. And that really annoys me because if you've ever tried to post a troubleshooting question about a camera or scans online, one of the first things you're going to be asked if you haven't already posted it along with your question pictures is to show the negatives. Uh, that's just a core part of diagnosing anything in film photography. So uh, that really annoys me. So I'm doing testing for two reasons. One, to determine what EI or exposure index you should shoot Fomapan 400 at with whichever filter if you want to get the infrared look. And two, to try and figure out a possible reason why people are so aggressively and cleanly divided on this matter. For this video, I'm only investigating Fomapan 400, not the other Foma stocks, and I'm not looking at roll film format. Some people also say that the other Foma stocks and that Foma 400 in roll film are infrared sensitive as well, but that's not what I'm testing here. Just sheet film, Fomapan 400, that's it. I developed all of these sheets of Fomapan 400 in stock XTOL for 7 minutes at 20 degrees Celsius because I've personally found that is the best developer to use for this particular film stock. So for my first initial proof of concept, I took my Heliopan 715-715 nanometer infrared filter, the Wista 45 RF, and my Rodenstock 180mm lens to take a picture of my neighbor's back window, with his permission, just because I have a scene then with paint and uh, the roof tiles, the sky and a bit of foliage and shaded foliage as well. So quite a technically useful if artistically bankrupt scene. I shot a total of four frames, the first being at EI 400 and that acts as an anchor or relative point to consider the density of the other frames against because that allows me to determine if any frame is say over or underexposed versus them all being over or underdeveloped so I can compare the infrared frames directly to the EI 400 frame. The other three shots were taken with the 715 nanometer filter at EI 6, 3 and 1.5 respectively. EI 6 is incredibly thin, there's no detail here, even the like the brightest parts of the roof, they're very very thin, there, there's nothing really there and the scan itself looks crap as you can see here. There's basically no detail, there's very low contrast, it's, it's not good. Even after correcting the white and black point, yeah, it doesn't look good. EI3 with the 715 nanometer filter looks a lot better. It's still quite thin though, however, it's usable. If you were stuck doing this at a push, you could probably get away with it. If you check the scan natively, it is still a bit gnarly, but when you correct the or set the white and black points, it looks okay. Not amazing, but it's okay. You can definitely work with it again at a push. However, the EI 1.5 shot looks a lot better. The sky is a lot thinner here, meaning it's darker. And this bit of hedge that sticks up is a lot darker, meaning it's brighter. And this, this part is in direct sunlight. It does look a bit thinner, maybe half a stop more would do, so EI 1 or thereabouts. But at the same time, you're expecting you know, less density in the sky. It's kind of a, an illusion almost. If you look at the actual paint on the walls, it is a little bit denser here. And I don't know how much that off-white yellowish paint reflects infrared specifically. If I were to use this as an anchor, like this part of the scene as a reference anchor, I would say that EI 1.5 is the way to go. And that's how I proceeded from here on. So yeah, there is a little bit of infrared sensitivity, but you need an extreme filter factor, at least with a 715 nanometer filter, 
to get anything resembling the IR look. EI6 is definitely a no-go. EI3 is not great, but I suppose you could do it at a push. EI 1.5, maybe 1 or even 0.75 is definitely the way to go, at least with this filter, with this particular film stock. With those results in hand, I went out to Marley Park, down to the Marley Walled Gardens, and took some more pictures with a variety of filters, and also shooting some Rolay IR 400, so that I could use that as a comparison, because it is a truly infrared sensitive film, well up towards 750 nanometers, versus the 700 and whatever that Fomapan 400 is sensitive to. These two are both Fomapan 400. This is unfiltered at EI 400, and this is filtered with the 715 nanometer Heliopan filter at EI 1.5. It wasn't as stunningly bright that day. It was a little bit darker in terms of the weather, and the sun was kind of peeking through clouds, which is, you know, a bit annoying. Not the end of the world. It is definitely a little thinner, so maybe EI1 is the safest way to go. Or I know it's technically 1.06 or whatever if you go half a stop more than EI1.5, whatever. About EI1 would work well. Something that happens anytime this debate about whether Formapan 400 has infrared sensitivity or not comes up is people saying that it has absolutely none. They tried it at like EI 0.03 and got a blank negative. That's probably because they're using a Hoya R72. I have both, so I tried them. This is at EI 3, this is at EI 1.5. No, it's not. I have them the wrong way around. You can see there's a little bit more density here. I don't know how well it's going to show up in the video. It should be okay. Um, regardless, there's basically nothing here. You know, these filters are not an instant cutoff, they ramp up, and that 90% peak is at 715 nanometers with the Heliopan, and it's 740 nanometers with the Hoya R72. Then I took a couple more shots just for reference. So, unfiltered, red filter, more or less the same exposure, a little bit over on this, but like, this is red brick and the door had a bit of a reddish tint. So given the fact that different colors come through differently through a color filter, obviously, I would call these more or less the same density for practical purposes. This is a bit thinner, so yeah, maybe an extra stop would have done it, looking at these side by side. But it's in a vague ballpark. Again, not direct, ultra bright direct sunlight this time, which is probably the main reason. So the next thing I did was compare the Forma 400 with the red number 25 at EI50 to Rolle IR400 with the same filter also at EI50. So the same filter factor for both. The negative is a bit denser here, but this film has, you know, more spectral sensitivity and there was more light, more infrared light available uh, that this film would be sensitive to than this one. So I expect this to be a little bit denser under the same conditions because even a red filter lets through a little bit of infrared light, which this stuff is very sensitive to. The last thing I did was take Rolay IR400 with the red filter versus the infrared filter. Three stops and four stops respectively, so EI50 and EI25. Again, this is the 715 nanometer Heliopan, not the Hoya R72. I don't use that filter basically at all now. Density-wise, they're essentially identical, which is perfect. That proves that the four-stop filter factor works well in a one-to-one -one test. Um, if I had an unfiltered shot with this same film, it would have proven that even further, potentially, but that's not really relevant for us here today. So this is Rolay IR400 at a correct exposure with a 715 nanometer filter. And here is the Fomapan. It is quite a lot thinner, so again, this depends on the time of day as well as the quality of the infrared light. There were some wispy clouds the sun was peeking out through, so not as much IR light gets through. Under these weather conditions, EI 1.5 was not quite enough, whereas in the original test, it was pretty okay. Slightly on the thinner side, but usable by any stretch of the imagination. However, here, it didn't work out too well. I think I've shot enough of this stuff. I'm gonna say, on a bright sunny day, EI 1 to 1.5, on a slightly cloudy day under like less than ideal conditions, 0 0.5, 0 0.375, something like that would work well. So Fomapan 400, at least in sheet film format, 
absolutely has some tiny amount of the very nearest infrared sensitivity. It's not a lot, but it is there. I've shown that this isn't just deep red filtration by comparing the red filter to the infrared filter. It would have been better if I had a deep, deep red filter to compare to, but I don't. But you can still see enough of the wood effect in these images to show that it, it is actually some teeny tiny amount of infrared sensitivity. I believe that the most likely reason people are getting such widely conflicting and varied results about testing this film under infrared shooting conditions is that a lot of people are probably just using the standard de facto Hoya R72 filter, which despite the name making a lot of people think it's a 720 nanometer bandpass filter, or long pass filter, excuse me, it's a 740 nanometer filter, which is ridiculous given the name of the filter. I understand that. And I completely agree with anyone who thinks it's a 720 nanometer filter, at least based on the name. And they're not getting results because it's not transmitting much of any light that the film is actually sensitive to. So yeah, that could be the most likely explanation. The other possible explanation is just that the film has some batch to batch variation that kind of adds or subtracts a bit of IR sensitivity from time to time. And I'd say that's probably less likely from a manufacturing standpoint, such severe variation in a light sensitive emulsion would be pretty bad, but it, it is possible. I still think the filtration and the choice of filter used is significantly more likely as the, the root cause of this divide in the community. Fomapan 400 really is only sensitive to the very, very nearest infrared wavelengths. We can see that because the wood effect is not very strong and you do need a huge exposure compensation, like a filter factor. You need to add a lot of stops of compensation when using even the relatively easy 715 nanometer filter to get a usable image. An EI 1.5 is what, eight, nine stops off the top of my head from EI 400? That is ridiculous compared to something like four stops with the same filter with Rolay IR400. Additionally, it doesn't give the same look as a truly infrared sensitive film like Rolay IR400 using the same filter. You can see in the Rolay IR400 images that you get the infrared look in the shade, whereas you don't with Fomapan. And visually, th that difference does show up in the images because in the shade, the Rolay film does give a noticeable infrared look to foliage that's not directly lit by sunlight, whereas Fomapan 400 does not. So what filter should you use? A Hoya R72 is obviously a no-go unless you want tremendously long exposures. And then even if you do expose it another five or eight stops, a bit of hyperbole, I know. I don't think it's gonna give good results regardless because it's the actual transmission overlap between the film sensitivity and the filter's transmission is so narrow that you're probably not going to get a good tonal gradation or separation of tones in your image, it's gonna look pretty awful, I would say. But if you try it and you get usable results, let me know in the comments down below. A Heliopan 695 nanometer filter is another option, but because it lets through a bit less infrared and a bit more red, it's probably not going to make that much difference compared to just using a deep red filter, which would allow you to do this maybe a bit more easily and at least with significantly shorter exposure times due to the lower filter factor needed. But maybe it's worth a try, I don't know. I would overall say that the Heliopan 715 nanometer filter, if not the best, is definitely a perfectly usable and viable candidate for shooting infrared photography with Fomapan 400 in a pinch. I hope you found this testing useful or informative in some way. And if you have any ideas for anything like this I can test in the future, please let me know in the comments down below. Stay safe and bye bye for now. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram where I post new pictures every day. If you like this video and enjoy what I do on the channel, please consider subscribing or checking out my Patreon where the tiers start at just one euro per month.